Yeah, and I get it. I'm lucky. Not everybody can be like me to have both beauty and um, the other one. So I'm just really lucky to be able to be here. And that's why I want to share as much as I can because I'm a giver. <laughs> Some say a carrier. I say a giver. It sounds nice. <laughs> Okay, that was a clip from Dixie Longgate's brand new show, Cherry Bombs and Bottle Rockets, touring now and coming soon to Galveston. The fast-talking Tupperware lady has entertained audiences all around the globe, and her new show tackles some of the lessons she learned from the pandemic. Dixie joins us now with more on Cherry Bombs and Bottle Rockets. Dixie, it's great to see you. I know you've it's been so, so good to busy. See your hands smile. You <laughs> always make me so happy. I've been so lucky to be there, uh, and, like on your show, so many times, and now the last two times. Now this one. And before it's been the zoom in because I'm out of town. I don't have enough time coming in town and everything. So you're always so nice to when I knock on the door, you're like, get in here, girl. Come on. And I will. <laughs> Listen, your your seat is, uh, we're saving a seat for you here in Studio B, but listen, if Zoom is all we can get you for now, we'll totally, uh, we'll totally take it. By the way, you are coming to Galveston July 6th, so to our viewers, mark your calendars. Two shows on that date, 3 p.m., 8 p.m. You've been really busy. Washington, D.C., Fort Worth, Lincoln, Nebraska, Jefferson City, Des Moines, New York, Vegas, Fort Lauderdale, Boston, Palm Springs. Dixie has been on tour. Tell us about how this show got its name, Cherry Bombs and Bottle Rockets. First of all, I'm exhausted. I can't even do it. Um, I've been running all over forever. And yeah, so I was, so the pandemic happened. You know, I was on my the, a tour with my show, Dixie's Tupperware Party Forever. I've been there twice um, to uh, to your neck of the woods, to Houston with that show. And then I followed that up with a show called Never Wear a Tube Top While Riding a Mechanical Bull and 16 Other Things I Learned While I Was Drinking Last Thursday, which I also brought to the Hobby Center. And now, uh, but a couple times, Galveston is like, hey, you're so pretty. I'm like, I know, I can't help it. You know, And so, um, you know, Jesus was in a good mood when he made me. So she said, the lady that owns it, Maureen, she's so neighborly. She said, why don't you come on down? I said, I'll come. And so I went down and performed at the Grand down in Galveston two different times. And so now what happened was the pandemic happened. Everything shut down. No, everybody was on Zoom. Every, I wasn't touring anymore. And I thought rather than stay in my trailer with my kids, listening to them yammering on about nothing, I might as well kind of pay attention to what's going on and write a good story out of it to, to, to say, let's lift ourselves up past where we are. So when the pandemic stopped and everybody was out kind of, in the world and reliving again you know there's everybody kind of went out and pushes it back in their mind like oh, it never really happened but so i think we're fundamentally different people than we was before so i thought i went back through kind of my my, my life and my stories and i was like well who's the person that you can be now who's the person that you always wanted to be and sometimes life just got in the way and stopped you from being it so i thought let me go back and talk about some of the stories in my past so i reconnected with a good friend of mine my childhood best friend in cricket and so she and i were talking about times that we would go down to the penny candy store down the street we get cherry bombs and bottle rockets so i named the whole show after the, this story that i tell in it and i make that story a little bit bigger i was gonna call it something else but it had a dirty word in the title and they said you can't put the dirty word on the post river and i'm like okay so <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why I'm calling it uh, Cherry Bombs about Rockets. Well, I, uh, you, my my interest is peaked. We we're seeing video right now, just little bits of this show. You do this one woman show, and you've always been reinventing yourself to refresh our viewers' memory. Dixie's Tupperware Party went from the Fringe Festival in New York in 2004, landed off Broadway in 2007. You earned a prestigious Drama Desk nomination for Outstanding Solo Performance. That show was then staged in Scotland, London, Australia in Canada, all over the US. And Dixie, you have continued going on stage, doing these solo shows, which is very difficult to do, I can imagine. It's fun. I love it. I have a great time because I get to be with different people all the time. And I get to, all my shows are, have a little piece of like interaction with them. So I get to talk to people, talk to the audience and get people involved. So it makes it different every time. And then, I, yes, I've been so lucky to be all over the world at this point. I'm in a place that I didn't even know how to food. It's crazy. <laughs> and so what I love is being able to go to these different places and learn about their culture and their history and their people. And um, and then share a little bit of my my Southern love with everybody. So it's, it's just been so so neighborly and yeah and i just finished i just i'm, I'm on my way now i'm going i'm to south carolina doing some shows but i just finished a month of shows at the kennedy center in washington dc wow and like, lord to go from my trailer in alabama doing little tupperware parties in people's living rooms and take that and spin it to a program that all the way ended up there in dc at the kennedy center 
it, I mean, it's mind blowing to me, but it's all these wonderful people along the way that has made the process so interesting and fun and wonderful people like you that keep opening up your home to me and saying, come on back and chat with me for a while. So I appreciate you. Well, we appreciate I you. I have to sit my kids in, Ron, and I don't care about my kids. I mean, they're just sticky and gross and, you know, they need better hobbies. You're a busy mom. You're a busy performer. The Kennedy Center, that is a really big deal. Every performer's dream, I can imagine. Repeatedly, you have gone on stage in these sold out venues. You are known for bringing people to their feet with nonstop laughter. What do you think it is, Dixie, that is drawing audiences in so much? And here we're seeing uh, some video from your last show, Never Wear a Tube Top While Riding a Mechanical Bull, and other things I learned while drinking. Last Thursday, I think I got it's the a very long title, but I have a lot to say. I got to <laughs> let it all come out of my mouth. I, you know what? I think uh, everything that I talk about is uh, it, there's a, there's a little touch of empowerment and um, excitement about life in all my shows. So basically, for me, I think uh, what what people find in the shows where they keep coming back, where they keep kind of bringing their friends and and things keep growing, is there's a little bit of love, there's a little bit of empowerment, there's a little bit of lift that I give to everybody. So when they go out into the world after the show, they feel a little bit more empowered to take on their life's challenges and go, you know what, look, because I want to tell you something, I don't know all the answer. I'm not a life coach, I'm not any of them things, but I've done so many things wrong in my life that I, at least I've learned those lessons. And my job, I think, I was put on this earth to tell people, oh, don't do the things that I did because I did them all wrong. You know, and then that way, you go out and no one, like a little battled, you know, you got a little bit more in your armor to be able to battle with, probably. That's the best way to say it. So I think that's what keeps people coming back and keep people hugging me and everything. Wise words from Dixie Longe. The hugs, the selfies, all of it. Dixie, we're out of time, but you will be on stage July 6th, the Grand 1894 Opera House in Galveston. Shows at 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. Dixie Longate, it's always so nice to see you. Thanks for making time for us at Houston Life, and hopefully next time you can be uh, right next to us here in Studio B. I will be, and I'll be bringing the cocktails. You know, I always do. <laughs> okay, and served in Tupperware, I hope. Obviously. What kind of Christian would I be if I didn't do that? That would be wrong. <laughs> Dixie, thanks again. Great to see you. In the meantime, for a link to follow Dixie and to find tickets, you can visit our website, HoustonLife.tv. Just look for that scene on Houston Life section. And Houston Life will be right back.